Join us today on the Final Hour podcast as we discuss the return of the ancient gods into America and the third member of the Dark Trinity. We interrupt your program to issue a severe warning for an impending emergency making its way to your area. We urge you to be watchmen of the times and to be prepared with the essential knowledge and supplies for the wake of the final hour. Welcome to the Final Hour Podcast, coming to you from the original Living Word Christian Center out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. My name is Jim Hammond, and this is... Linnea Farrell. And, and you are... <laughs> <laughs> and I am uh, John Gap, one of the chosen frozen here in Minnesota. Frozen chosen, 15 degrees. Oh, it's, it's chilly. And we, hey, we want to let you know we have merchandise. Yes, we do. And yeah. we have all kinds of different sweatshirts um water bottles hats coffee cups stickers um the sweatshirts are amazing in my opinion yeah um everything you need to rep the final hour podcast and you can get them in most most colors most things in most colors um and thank you for those people that have uh uh, what was that uh what was her name three uh, a really good order three hundred dollars was it brooke yep brooke thank you brooke um and thank you for your nice message um so the the merchandise we appreciate it thank you so much i think uh we tried to we we don't want it to be overpriced um and so i don't think it's It's too it's too highly priced um and um yeah i mean we sold over a thousand dollars worth of stuff as of now and we don't because of the company we use it we're not making a huge profit and by the way there will be a day where we say those profits um, above and over the tithe are going to go to some type of organization, a charitable. I think I know who, who's. Remember that girl that used to play with you? She runs. She runs an organization like that, like backpacks for kids. Oh the, yes. Yes. Oh, cool. Yes. And so we're gonna yeah. we're gonna take the Ashley. Ashley Ryan. We're yeah. gonna take that yeah. the 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 more than the tithe out of the profit from the merchandise and give it uh, to a, an to an organization um, that helps the children. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas yeah. a few days in advance. I just want to make something clear on the the Israel tour. Oh, yeah. Um, that it's going to be a final hour podcast tour. Please listen. Yeah. Okay. We don't know the dates, right? Not and, yet. And if you're going to have to get a shot, we're not going to take the tour. That's what we're trying to find out, right? Right now in Israel, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to get anything. I was just over there in March. But like I said in the last podcast, we want to look at this global passport thing. And I, you know, what are they requiring? What What's going to be the requirements? I don't even think uh, a year from now, these global passports will even be rolled out. Yeah. They've just got permission to do it, that's the that's the Chinese-run World Health Organization. Mm-hmm. So we might want to get our travel in, you right. know, while we can, and that's why we're doing it. We're doing a final hour podcast tour, and we will get you the dates when we get them. We're going to put something up on the website. You're going to see it on the website that's going to be added that you will be the first one to get the information as soon as we get the dates. It'll be sometime in late October early November in 2023, right? One or two buses of people, um, probably a 10 day tour, but we do not know the dates. We do not know anything. Listen, if, if there's a vaccine issue, I'm not going, I'm not going myself. Me neither. Not getting another one. I already got one to go to Israel a couple of years ago. I'm not, I'm never getting another one. So that's what we're finding out. So just we will answer all those questions as soon as we get them. There's going to be something on the website that you can sign up. You'll be the first one to get the information. We'll keep you updated. All right. Yeah. And hopefully within a couple of weeks, we will have a lot more information. Today is Thursday, December 8th that we're taping this. This will air at 12.01 a.m. 
1201 a.m. on Tuesday, December 13th. So, Unless. Uh, well, if, but if you're going on Mountain Time, you yes. can catch this at 1101 yeah. p.m. Monday, December right. 12th on Mountain Time. So My uh, makes... Western South Dakota people, uh, you know. You're giving them a shout out. 1101. So yeah. that can makes I just, 12 I'm a Rapid o'clock. City boy, okay? That makes 12 I'm a boy. o'clock Tuesday, Jim. <clears throat> and let me just ask you a question, John. <laughs> Okay, because Jim thinks me and Gail mm. are the only ones who agree that 12 o'clock is a new day. But no. when do we start? When do we celebrate New Year's Day? 1201? 12, no, 1200. <laughs> 0, 0. 11 59 59 is the last second of the previous a day. Monday. I yeah. always thought, of a Monday. Yeah. So then a it's Tuesday would 12, be 1200. 0, 0. That is the beginning of a new day. <laughs> How much coffee what have you, you had? What do you think, Jim? I think she's what do I think? ready I to think go for more. I think she's just hyped up. I, cele- yeah. I think we're celebrating um, New Year's Kwanzaa. at midnight because we're closing out the year. Jim will be oh, celebrating sure. January 1st at 12.01. Listen, guys. this guys. will upload <laughs> guys. on 12.01 a.m. Tuesday, December 13th. <laughs> okay, unless you're mountain time, then it's 11.01. That's right. Or and, if you're Pacific time, I mean, that's that's 10.01. 10.01. And, and if yeah. you're in Hawaii, <laughs> <laughs> if you're in England or any other place in the country, we're not sure. But for Jim, it's 1201. Okay, guys. And a shout Consult out your international <laughs> clock time zone uh, chart. A shout out to our New Zealand. I saw New Zealand? some uh, a new, our viewers, listeners in New Zealand. Some we want to say hello to you um, and your beautiful country. Um, yes. Good day, Kiwis. We just saw that we were um, number 200 on the list Ooh. and moving up right. for Christian podcasts in New Zealand. Yep. So thank you so much. Um, God bless you. Um, and those that listen and view in New Zealand, please subscribe. Please subscribe. The last two weeks, we've been digging into a book by Rabbi Jonathan Kahn called The Return of the Gods. The Return. It's right here. Of the Gods. Um, he is a... A uh, New York Time, New York Times best-selling author. Yeah, you can find this book in um, on Amazon. It sold out. It's sold out in our bookstore here at church numerous times. Yeah, he's written other books you may be familiar with. Harbinger, Harbinger Two. He's written a, a book called The Mystery of the Shemitah, a book called The Oracle, another one called The Book of Mysteries. Um, and this new one, The Return of the Gods, you can get on Amazon, all of these on Amazon. He did give me permission personally um, to use this book on our podcast. And uh, well, didn't you uh, run into him in Israel? On he a was tour? on his tour. More than I got to go on um, when I was in Israel doing a multitude of things. Yeah. I hopped on one of his tours for two and a half days because I knew we would be doing right. a final hour podcast tour one day. And um, that's when we had the live from Israel with Jim Hammond yeah. episode. That was pretty awesome. And and I got to talk to him. I got to get to know him. He's a he's a he's a professional tour guy. Yeah. Right. I mean, he 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 snaps his fingers, and and he's got six hundred people on a tour. Wow. You know, uh, what's that? You know, thirty people a bus. That's twenty buses. Ten ten to twenty wow. buses per tour. Um, but but we pick up today with a member of what uh, of what Rabbi Khan calls the Dark Trinity. Um, we're going to talk about how these gods, uh, just like in the Old Testament, have been let in and are starting to control elements in America and around the world today. Yeah. The reason that we're talking about this on the podcast, because you need to know what you're fighting. Mm-hmm. Um and you you need to know your enemy. Any war college is going to teach that the more you know about your enemy, the more effective you will be against them. The Bible talks consistently in the New Testament about spiritual warfare, that we are in a war. Mm-hmm. We're not warring against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, might, and dominion. That's yeah. a scripture, and those are demons. Power, yeah. principalities, might, and dominion. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. Just that tells you in the spirit, there are going to be things built by spiritual entities that are not your friends. And you you have to pull them down, not mm-hmm. with natural weapons. You pull them down with spiritual weapons and strongholds 
these things build are fortresses. And, you know, these are these are these entities that are building these fortresses. Um, and, and it's our job to pull them down. And, and we have the New Testament telling us to pull these things down. So if it's a spiritual war, just like a natural war, if you have to, if you know your enemy's tendencies, if you know what they like, if you know how yeah. they attack, yep. you know their weaknesses, you're going to be more successful. It's, it, and that's why we're talking about this. And this is why Rabbi Khan wrote this book, uh, looking at 1 Kings uh, 11, 7. I will say this. Um, we have something we need to add because it fits into this. And we'll be getting back into a little bit more news in the coming weeks, but um, Balenciaga um, is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yep. And I think we should almost put somehow Balenciaga in the title. Right? Sure. I don't know. You I think mean, that'll cause? You think they'll hide us even more? Well, I don't think it's uh, right? too far fetched uh, that it's connected to some of the other things that we're talking about with uh, the Moloch? dark trinity. This fits. Well, yeah. yeah. I so mean, wasn't who was the Moloch? first one? Was it was Bale. it Bale? And then Ishtar. And Bale and, and Balenciaga uh, yeah, go. are very We got some information on I that. I mean, yeah, you can connect them pretty quickly. Yeah, you can. We're gonna round this out because it fits. And yeah. this Balenciaga thing, they're trying to hide it. And it is a serious, serious deal. It exposes a lot of people. And it's so connected. For, is, what, but, but for what they are. So and it has to do with children. And children. connected to people in uh, influential places. Yes, but of course they're saying that it's conspiracy theorists oh, who are going course. down rabbit holes who found all these connections. But Cons if you literally yeah. follow the money or names or organizations, yeah. you can you can spend hours on it. I spent two hours last night Lene on a few different... has been all over this for weeks, and she's been... And so we've been waiting, you know, yeah. trying to figure out when do we say it? When, when do we try to at least explain what's going on with this? So please stay yeah, tuned. But, Don't tune out. We're going to do that at the end. It all fits. It does. This God we're talking about today of the ancient days is behind what Linnea is going to talk to you about this Balenciaga thing. First Kings eleven seven. Then Solomon did build a high place for Chamash, the abomination of Moab. I'd like to know about him. But that's not who we're talking about today. In the hill that is before Jerusalem and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Isn't that interesting that one of those hills that we're actually on in those in those Israeli tours, these, yeah. these, oh. these idols were sitting on right outside of Jerusalem. Crazy. This is the third member of the dark trinity that either has invaded or is in the process of evading America now. You can see him in the Bible. He's very prevalent in the Bible. His mm -hmm. name is Molech. Um, Molech. And just refer, to, you know, uh, for to the two podcasts before this, if you want to hear about the other two members mm -hmm. of what Rabbi Khan calls the Dark Trinity, mm -hmm. these are pagan gods. And in the pagan world, before the gospel of Jesus Christ pushed these guy, gods out. Yeah into exile, it was a very, very common thing to sacrifice human beings. The German barbarians did it. The Aztecs did it. The Israelites did it. Yeah. Um, the, the Vikings at times did it. Uh, even the English, Scottish, those wild tribes over there yeah. in Great Britain and Scotland before the Romans even got there we're doing it. Yeah. This has always been a thing, an ancient pagan religious thing. Malek is a God that demands the children. And how do we know that? You see it constantly in the Bible and, yep. th and through these ancient empires, second Kings 23, 10. And, and, and he defiled uh topath, a tophath, which is in the Valley of the children of Hinnom that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Malek. And let's just explain kind of the scripture we've been talking about. Uh, look, th look at this because Jesus explains exactly mm. how this happens. He's, he's talking about, we think that this is about a man. And in a sense it is when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. So 
spirit gets cast out. He's going to leave for a period of time. Then he saith, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. And so he, then he goeth, he taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so it shall be with this wicked generation. Mm -hmm. So we see this can happen with a large people group, a generation of people. And just a side note, I'll never forget, uh, Ken, uh, Kenneth Hagin uh, was, there, there was this guy who was a professor of criminology in the 50s, all right? Mm -hmm. And so he had all these books, you know, that studied the psyche of criminals, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he retires at, in, at like age back then, 60 or 62 or something. And um, he was a college professor, and he has all these books on, cr on criminals, the psyche of criminals. He starts reading these books and reading these books. Yeah. And eventually, it, this is why you got to pay attention to what you're putting in yep, to definitely. you. He starts molesting little children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he goes up into a healing line um, with, with, uh, with Brother Hagen, who's now in heaven. And he tells him, you know, I've, I've got this pedophilia thing on me. I think it's a demon, you know. And, and Kenneth Hagen tells him, he says, based on this scripture, he says, I can cast it out of you, but here's the problem, using the name of Jesus. But if I cast it out of you, you have to promise me that you will pray in tongues 30 minutes a day and read the Bible 30 minutes a day. Yeah. Mm. Because notice, this thing comes back and finds the house empty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So Hagen's like, if you don't fill it, if you don't fill the house, mm -hmm. the thing's coming back. And he's bringing seven friends, all right? So the guy did. The guy, he promised him, all right, 30 tongues, 30 cleansing myself with the word, whether if it's listening, can do that through listening, reading, speaking it, Yeah. right? You saw the guy five years later, completely different person. Wow. Like completely delivered. That's amazing. Right? Mm -hmm. So what Jesus is saying here is if America is going to throw God out, like right. they've done in the public schools, right. separation is of church and state. Yeah. Um, as ordained ministers, yeah. uh, John and I, we, we couldn't endorse a candidate. No. From the pulpit. Matter of fact, we we might even be taking a risk on being prosecuted for just saying who we vote for. Yeah. Uh, technically, um, you can be prosecuted. You can't endorse someone. Why is that? By the way, they, are, um, they, are they just that afraid? Right? That's, that's, are they that afraid of ministers? Uh, yes. Yeah, they yeah. are. I mean, if you look at if you look at the American Revolution, actually, the uh, preachers the they were some of the most informative people uh, to inform uh, the citizens of the United. Well, what became the United States as to what their rights were, and to inspire them to freedom. That and that is that. I mean, the Crown definitely. Uh, thought it was a problem, but if you see, a, if you look at a lot of the prominent leaders of the Revolutionary War, uh, preachers were instrumental. But but there was just two pastors that ha endorsed candidates. Well, yeah. Well, if if it you're left on leaning, which side you go. If you're left leaning, you can endorse yeah. anyone you want. And to okay. be honest, if you want to, if you want to get into the battle, uh, your civil rights would as a pastor will outweigh what is there, but it's going to be the full weight of the left part of government pushing against any sort of preacher or pastor that uh, is willing to step into that public public sphere of politics. So yeah. it's it's definitely um, it's definitely a fight that could be wa waged. And to be honest, your dad, stepped into that a little bit and said, no, we're not going to cower just because the IRS is, is putting weight right. on us yeah. to, to fold and, and to not do what we're doing. So, you know, yeah, because suddenly my, 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 I think my dad said from the pulpit maybe years and years ago yeah. who he would vote for and, yeah. oh, gee, what a coincidence. All uh, of a sudden uh, after that for dealt with a, what, like a four year and, audit. Yeah. 
And so personal but, when they could not at the church, right? We won that in court, right? We fought that. He he. They audited uh, yeah. my parents personally, and it lasted for four years. Basically, they were harassed for four years. But because of that, a bunch of different churches then had their suits that were that were levied against them dropped, thrown out. Yeah. Yes. And but we're, which you know, is why the left now is trying to change the right. oh yeah they're trying to, they're churches. trying to yes. change tax laws for right. churches and that's something to pray for but mm-hmm. yep. when we uh, legalized abortion when we took church yeah. out of the government when we tr- took God out of the public schools we legalized abortion in the seventies you can't tell me Malek wasn't there and is not here the Satanists don't even hide it no. they look at abortion as a form of sacrifice there, there's a satanic video of these satanists and they have i think i sent it to john it was a while ago mm-hmm. it's a pretty dark video it is satanists drumming on drums with parts of aborted babies like that is their drum sticks that's disgusting uh since uh 1973 yeah. um there have been uh, approximately 63 and a half million abortions in the united states well did you guys hear route Reuters? uh Reuters. Okay, I was yeah, I was I was just looking last Sorry. night on abortion because I knew we were talking Routers? about this. Just kidding. Apparently, Reuters. But the Nigerian military ran secret mass abortion program, and they said they killed over a hundred thousand. They aborted over a hundred thousand right. babies that the women didn't know what was happening yeah. to them. They're just mm-hmm. drugging them or yeah. giving them injections, and they're aborting babies. There, there are multiple stories about uh, doctors. Um, yes against women's will, especially women of color, uh, waking up from a yeah. a regular procedure and all of a sudden they also have had an, a hysterectomy and they yes, can no I've longer. Yes, I've heard about that too. They can, and a lot of this is, is from the Margaret Sanger, uh, Planned Parenthood, mm-hmm. um, like ideology that has spread since her in, uh, the early 1900s. It's, right. it has been a, an absolute um, blight on America's uh, conscience and and heart. You know, it it there's no way to <laughs> to um, make up for that. There's it is we we need forgiveness. Yeah. As as America, we need Jesus. We do. I, I forgot to introduce our our producer, JD. And that's not Jack Daniels. JD that's, Dupree. That's Jeremiah Dupree. Can we get a can we get a little sound to show him we still have sounds? Okay. He always, he always claps for himself. But listen. <laughs> but listen. Now that this is Malek. It's just in a different way. They're not putting yeah. a baby in the fire, but they're killing babies. And they're killing babies in massive amounts. And you know, don't don't let the satanic church fool you. No. Okay. They do. They're, they're you, you, the videos out there. They're beating drums with 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 the body parts of this isn't <laughs> of of babies. But can I say okay. something? Um, because and, and, of and in one of their in one of their sacrifice sucks. sessions. Yes, but in um, <sighs> because of the laws that they're giving back abortion to the states, so the yeah. states can decide. Yep. But the abortion are the Satanists in states where it's banned are fighting for religious rights mm-hmm. to give abortions because they call it a sacrifice. They call it like their religious. It's out in the open. Yes, it's very out in the open. And I don't know if you guys have ever looked into abortion or looked at any of the instruments they use or what it actually is, but during like each different term of when you can get an abortion and now you can even kill a child after it's born. It's called infanticide. That's like yeah. the new title for it. Infanticide. Yep. But it it does cause pain to the child. If a baby Absolutely. in the womb can smile, if it eats a lemon or a piece of kale, what do you think it? What do you think happens right. when an abortion or a utensil comes in to kill the child? Right. And, and now they are pushing laws where you can kill a child after birth. Right. Yes. And that's the next step. Up to, and, up to a, a month. Yeah. yeah Thirty and, days. And in the days of the Israelites, the children um, that were from that were poor children from poor families were offered up more than any other, and they would actually pay people for their children to sacrifice. Oh, look at Planned Parenthood. More poor children are offered up to yeah. the abortionist than any other child, right? You could just call an abortionist a, a priest of Malek. Absolutely. This is all one guy. Unfortunately. He's done this all through history, and yeah. he's in the Bible. Yep. An abortionist is no different than one of the satanic priests 
that sacrificed to Malek. And Malek is all over the Bible. We just read two scriptures about him. So first it's Baal, which we talked about two weeks ago. He's the original guy. He brings, Baal brings in, like Jesus said he would, his friends. Yeah. Last week we talked about Ishtar, right? And now you've got Malek. We saw in 1 Kings 11 it, 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 that it actually called Malek an abomination. Just think, think about this, just on a side note. King Solomon had multiple visitations from God, and from God personally. Just because you have a visitation from God and you've been made the wisest and richest man who ever lived, right? Mm -hmm. And Solomon is building places for, the, for this God, Malek. We're just right outside Jerusalem. And, and you know, God showed up and to Solomon and said, what do you want? Solomon chooses wisdom. God yeah. says, Oh, I'm going to reward you for choosing wisdom and makes him the richest man that's ever lived. Right. And King Solomon, in all his wisdom and all his riches, was 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 he actually was supporting the sacrifice, right. putting babies in the in the fire. It just shows how far right. you can fall. And, and, and mm -hmm. um, it, you know, the mythologies and beliefs. This is Rabbi Khan of men may follow after the principalities and spirits um, and the principalities and spirits may follow after the mythologies and beliefs of men, but the argument is, is immaterial. Malek is obviously the spirit and the God of child sacrifice. Yes. It is a principality of inhuman and horrid destruction. Uh, John Milton wrote a famous poem called paradise lost. Yep. And it's about the god Malek. And it goes like this. First Malek, horrid king, is smeared with blood of human sacrifice and parents' tears. Though for the noise of drums and timbrels loud, their children's cries unheard that pass through the fire to the, his grim idol. You know, Winston Churchill once used the demon god Malek and compared him to Hitler. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Bible talks about the Canaanites. They were a culture that participated in child sacrifice. And it's interesting because the Greeks and the Romans had historians who witnessed the same thing that the Bible describes in the Phoenicians. And from that, that, that it was a smaller empire, but it was an empire by the name of Carthage. Yeah. Remember Hannibal? Yep. They gave the Romans all kinds of trouble. Yeah. Well, you know, I always kind of pulled for the Carthaginians. Yeah. Not after you, what you hear. Not after There's you, a famous yeah. a Greek historian named Diodorus, and he's writing about the Carthaginians. Uh, there was in their city a bronze image, and they called this god Cronus, mm. extending its hands, right? Palms up yep. and sloping forward towards the ground. Like that guy. Yeah. Yeah, you can see this these these things if you pull them up, so that each of the children, when, when they were placed on the hands, they rolled down the hands and fell into a, a gaping pit uh, yep. filled oh with gosh. fire. The Carthaginians, uh, you know, Hannibal's people, uh, uh, sacrificed their children. Cronus was the Greek version of the Roman Saturn, the god who devoured his own children. His name is used either because the Carthaginians now associated him with Malek yeah. or Baal because this was how Diodorus had made sense of what was taking place. And again, another scripture on Malek, Jeremiah 32, 35. They built the high places of Baal. Remember, Baal's the first guy. Mm -hmm. He's going to push God out. Which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom to cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire unto Malek, I, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. The reason this was so prevalent in the pagan world is because God was completely absent. Hmm. But when you're talking about Israel, they wound up with these gods right. because they turned from Jehovah. Mm -hmm. And it was also right. not uncommon for children in the pagan world of old to be killed right there in their mother's wombs. This is all a spirit of Malek. Yeah. And in America, just in the last 50 years, step by step, open door, open door to Baal in yeah. the 60s. 
They, they took God out of the public schools. Yep. We have invited each one of these gods in. You can see that the end of child sacrifice and human sacrifice ended yeah. when the Christian faith, the gospel, took hold. It put these gods into exile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about this. The Soviet Union, when they became a communist country, they renounced Christianity, yep. renounced Jesus right. Christ. They were the first country to legalize abortion in 1920. Wow. The killing of unborn children, all right? And this is like within two years of yeah. after the communist right. revolution. Right. Nazi Germany, under the disguise of the, the master race, they didn't want abortions to happen that affected German or Aryan birth rates. But that God, Malek, he came out because they were obsessed with slaughtering the children of other races. Yep. And Malek Sick. was very interested in the Jewish children. I would love to know how wow. many Jewish children were sacrificed right. by the Jews to Malek, just w by the Jews themselves, right, in ancient times. So now we have Malek, the third member of the Dark Trinity, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. and, and he was, his door was open in, in January 22nd, 1973, in America, the Supreme Court authorized the murder of unborn children. Mm -hmm. And don't be fooled with the new ruling. It's up to the states. Right. The states can do whatever they want. It's just not a federal law. These three demon principalities always work together. Yep. Yep. Baal yep. lays the groundwork. Mm -hmm. Tries to move the nation away from any biblical foundation. Yeah. Take God out of everything. Think about it. The paganism always blurs the lines mm -hmm. between Definitely what does. is a human and what an animal is. Yeah. Really, it does. <laughs> right. Baal, yes. in its idol image, is a some type of bull-horned image. Yep. Always elevates animal life, and human life is devalued. Baal always kind of had a thing where you could create your own idol. And fashion your own truth and values. Like build a bear, but with uh, <laughs> yeah, paganism. For real. Build a bail. <laughs> so <laughs> good one, Jim. So, I like it. So with bail, but I like it. Yeah. <laughs> with bail, there was never one truth. There's no absolute. Each person can do as they please. Sure, All right. If you want to believe in Jesus, that's fine. But that is that's exactly fine. what But why it don't you also? Like... Why don't you also have some of this? All right. Maybe sprinkle a little bit of that. Come on, Bell well, says. Well, remember we talked about a few weeks ago. You could create your own religion on your app and oh, yeah. conform Christianity to your needs, yeah, and your it, beliefs. And, and Bell, Christian light, brings in <laughs> Ishtar, and we talked yeah. about her last week. Right, Ishtar sexualizes everything, confuses sexuality, right. d d tears apart, uh, you know, uh, the, the marriage values. Yeah. Tear, tears apart, you know, <laughs> she, Ishtar was very. Uh, in the in the in, in the natural she was seen as a a very masculine man she was a warrior she was a goddess of destruction and war and it, it popularized ishtar a female being being masculine yeah. and she always depopularized a male that's being masculine the last 25 years in yes, america that's for ishtar sure. and you can look in all these civilizations this is what happened this is what she did ishtar we talked about last week bail the week before Ishtar, as we talked about, her mythologies are filled with unrestrained sexuality. Her sexual revolution, as I said, severs. That was in the 60s. No, notice, God out of the public school. Mm. Within two years, you've got a sexual revolution in America. And, and, the, and then, <laughs> wow, early 70s, yeah. abortion. So both of these gods are invited in with Baal. And so the natural instinct to save your mm. child at all costs... That, that's not really here anymore, okay? It is believed that by many Bible commentators and scholars that in the ancient times, Ishtar was called Ashtoreth in the Bible, worked in tandem with the cults of Baal and Melech, all right? They all worked together. Mm -hmm. And you see it. In yeah. other words, children produced by sexual acts in Ishtar's temples in the Babylonian Empire, right. um, um, Sumerian, the Sumerians. Is, is that the related to the Corinthian, um, the uh, temple where is it? It's not Athena. Artemis. Artemis, yeah. I don't know if the Greeks ever got there. Sure. Uh, if because they were they publicly had... sacrificing children. Right. 
I don't. I've never read anything about the Greeks doing it because right. their philosophers always criticized right. it. Sure, but that's a good point. But they still because they had that that uh, sex, uh, the sexual um, sacrificing. Like yeah. that, that, they had to go work at the temple and uh, have sex with strangers. That, this was that, Ishtar. Yeah, it was her way of worship, and you know. But listen to this. Children produced by sexual acts in Ishtar's temples in the, in the Babylonian Empire, um, in the Phoenician Empire, in the Sumerian Empire, in the Canaanite Empire. All the, or they didn't have an empire, but in the, in the, in the Canaanite states. That, 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 that these temple prostitutes, when they had kids, mm -hmm. they, were, they, were, they were sacrificed to Malek. Uh. So the kids would be automatically sacrificed. Just like in the sexual revolution... More and more children are conceived outside of marriage. Right. And they're more likely to not be wanted. Right. And their lives provide the modern day sacrifices that go to Malek through abortions. So what in ancient times caused a mom to put her infant or child in the fires of Malek? Here's the key. And it's, it's all found in archaeology. The moms believed that by doing this, they would get Malek's favor that her endeavors would be fruitful, that she would be given, be given automatic prosperity. Her prayers would get answers, and her life would be blessed. There was a, 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 a Greek historian named Clerchus. He's writing about child sacrifice back then, and this is what he wrote out of reverence for Kronos. That was Malek, you know, with another name. The Phoenicians and the Carthaginians, whenever they needed to get a great favor from the gods, they would vow one of their children by burning it as a sacrifice to, yeah. to the god, what the Carthaginians called Kronos. That's Malek. And they believed they would be given automatic success. Okay, but I just have a thought. If I was a person back then, wouldn't you kind of look at the people sacrificing their children and look at them and be like, Where's your favor? Where, like, what has that got you? And then not want to do that. So nobody questioned anybody who was sacrificing their children that they weren't receiving those things from the gods. Is just what I'm saying. I just think you're you're not you you you. You're so deceived. our society you're, is so yeah. free. It's when you got a king yeah. telling that, you to that, do that. Remember, we read that in the Babylonian, every woman was was compelled, compelled. to go to the temple and act yeah. as a prostitute at least once in her life. Yep. Compelled. Right. Okay. Right. If there's nobody still, votes. You're, you don't just, get a court of no, law. You, right. If the king says you die, you die. But right? okay, and, okay, then think of the so moms who didn't want to do that, and you're going through your whole pregnancy knowing you're going to have to give the baby to the God, and you were saying, like, yeah. you were reading in that poem. But, that but what if you were, were one of the child children that lived, and your mom had sacrificed two babies, and you were one the one that lived? And it was just in your society. It was just in your culture. That's how you grew up. This is... You know what I mean? Talk about so it, mental illness well, I mean, back then. There's a there's a lot of this uh, in like the the book The Giver. You ever, oh, you ever yes. read that? Yes, you I know, have. when you are conditioned to think that's the norm, you know, by by either uh, circumstance of life, and you say, well, I guess this is just the way it is, or you know, whatever deception is spiritual deception. Obviously, of there's course. so much spiritual deception. So sad. But you know, once once they get into that, that you have something has to pierce the veil of their understanding that sa that says no. And I think probably there's a lot of moms that didn't go through with it because, you know, their love for their child, I, I think that's undeniable. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know how historically fa accurate that is, but it's embedded I mean, it's, in their culture. It, this is just what be. they did. And, and maybe they're thinking, you know, just, that it prolongs the much. lives of their other two right. children. And, yeah. I mean, when it's your civilization, this is what you do. When you're weird, if you don't do it, right? That's, and and that's that's Malek. And they believe they would be given automatic success. Now, listen today. So today, what's the difference? Why does a mother kill a son or a daughter in the womb? Well, we have to all agree the most common answer is if the child lives and she has to take care of the child, right. the mother doesn't get as good a life. The child takes up what her said. time. This is what that's society, what they, that's what society says. He takes her possible education. Yeah. 
Yeah. He takes her endeavors. The child takes their future earning ability. The child is a burden to the mother's aspirations. And if she's single, uh, it might be harder to find uh, a person that okay, will well enjoy then, their life. Okay, well, then, instead of giving yeah. people, Biden's administration, giving um, student loans out to people who can obviously pay them back, why don't you create a plan then where you're supporting single moms? Because they're all, oh. I, oh, there's I all like kinds it. of. There's That's all. A, I thought you were going to say something else. Isn't <laughs> well, I had I an stop, answer already. I, I'm I'm just going surface. No, I I'm not going deep with my that, stuff. It's it's, it's just, the right question. I mean, like we have, we can have solutions to problems like absolutely. this, and to make a woman feel like it's going to lessen your life to have a child. Right. That's just heartbreaking. My children have not lessened my life in any way. Do we all have to sacrifice things? Yes, we do. Absolutely. But that's a choice you make when and, you're making the choice to do what you're doing. Uh, and there's obviously a sacrifice uh, when they choose not to. But see, you're sacrificing your, yeah. either way. You're sacrificing, you're sacrificing to kill the child or, or sacrificing to keep the right. child. You're so are you going to choose life or are you going to choose death? Right. Sound like, yeah, so by a so <laughs> sorry, I was saying, uh, isn't there a bumper bumper sticker? That says, so by I'm aborting sure the I child, by aborting the child, it puts the mom in better position to achieve her goals, to get success, prosperity, just like the Carthaginians. Yeah. I've heard plenty of female celebrities and other women of influence. They boast that they yeah. have found success in their careers because they have found life without their unborn child, that they are more prosperous and they are more successful because they ended the lives of their unborn child. You can actually find that. You can. And can I say in the last probably four months, I have heard three songs from some pretty famous women who have created songs about abortion and yeah. making it be glamorized. It's appalling. Malek. Malek. Yeah. Malek. In other words, just like the Phoenicians, just like the Carthaginians, just like the Canaanites, just like the Israelis, okay, they're trying to invoke blessing by doing this, by killing the child, prosperity into their lives. They're actually writings by Greek philosophers that witnessed these child sacrifices. So. A guy named Plutarch. I think we're all familiar with him. Yeah. Really said there were really loud noises. Uh, you know, it, it was so loud. Flutes, drums. You couldn't hear the baby crying wow. as it was being burned. It literally shielded the public from hearing the horror of the baby burning to death. It's no different than today than replaying. You, you're not going to see an abortion on mm -hmm. TV. Because it's a horrific thing. If you could it put is. that, if you could put that baby on an ultrasound. Oh. You, you, you would see it yeah. experiencing pain like any other human right. being. But that's all right. hidden. That's right. all hidden by the drums, by the yeah. noise, by 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 everything. Well, it's hidden. You'll never see that. Was that was it Rashida Talib that uh, was saying, you know, there's it it's not true that the sonograms and the ultrasounds. Oh, are, that was Stacey Abrams. Stacey the heartbeat Abrams. Yeah. of a child is it's such a it's, it's a facsimile. Yeah. Whatever. It's not it's not real. I don't it's, know. It's I watched, such a lie. I it watched um lie. some stuff on abortion yesterday. I didn't watch an actual abortion, but you can watch like a simulated abortion mm -hmm. of the baby. And mm -hmm. at 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 conception the baby has a heartbeat. Yeah. So how can you say it doesn't have at six weeks or something, I think the baby can start to feel things. Yeah. So they're saying absolutely the baby feels yeah. everything. From an abortion. And, and they, they they shoot, and sorry, I'm being a little graphic, but they shoot something into the baby and they have to put it in the head or yeah. the chest to give the baby a cardiac arrest. Right. Yeah, they it it's literal killing. It, it is, is literal, literal and, but, murder. But we have, Malek, and yeah. John, our point. both you and I have seen, this point. and this yeah. is a really good book, but we have both seen um, abortion doctors yep. who literally look, right. they say, we love it. Yeah. We get, feed off of the power yeah. of this. Yeah. That, I mean, that is like this That's one guy, John, demonic. remember that one guy? Yes. The priest, he was absolutely. like it, shaking, like, I want more babies. It, yes. It's, Disgusting. Yes, these are it all is. your. This Absolutely. is your 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 uh, your neighborhood Disgusting. abortion doctor. And yes. and one more thing, I don't have the article on this, but I can find it. But there are communities where I don't know if it's Satanist. I don't know what the religion is, but these people breed women to have babies to sacrifice well, them in abortions. Sounds a lot like what we. we just it's talked like a about. whole community. They pay people like thirty thousand dollars to get pregnant and take their baby, and so they I think can it's have in their, like Ohio. Or, so they can have their little ceremony. Yes. This book is amazing. And literally, there's so much more to it. 
I mean, I probably covered, touched on, outlined 40 pages. Mm. This is a 250-page book. And I even the 40 pages, it's just skimming by Jonathan Kahn called Return of the Gods. He definitely has a gift of revelation. Yes, he does. Um, it, it, it's on, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, and we have, like I said, we have something that's going to go really well. Um, we'll get back a little bit into the news next week. We just kind of want to let, let that, let some news accrue yeah. rather than saying the same things every week that Linnea has really been following this closely. It's no different. This fits in and talking about this, this company Balenciaga. And I'm telling you, they're trying to so hard to hide this. Yeah, they are. The New York times is saying this is all right wing conspiracy. That's their thing now. Right. But no, 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 no. Uh, the evidence is there. The evidence is there. They, they don't even want you to look into it. But and, and, you, and if you don't know about this, you're not paying attention. It was on Tucker Carlson. Um, be aware of this because this is truth. Yeah. yeah. So around Thanksgiving time, Balenciaga dropped its uh, Christmas ads. And in the ad, I don't know if you guys have seen, I don't know how many of you are familiar with or have looked into the Balenciaga campaign but basically it was a little girl i mean they did three ads there's, yeah yeah there's, there's a few but this is the one that kind of like kicked it off so this little girl this little redheaded girl she's probably four years old she's really cute is holding a teddy bear and the teddy bear is in bondage gear and all over the table and stuff there's like liquor bottles all these random things yep. so people started saying balenciaga why are you having a child hold a teddy bear right. and depicting child fetishization right. of bondage gear and that's, allowing that's se like se sexual bondage yeah. gear? Yes. The teddy bear. Yeah. And so it was, Balenciaga yeah. came on and said, we didn't have anything to do with that. That was all the photographer. I did listen to a few podcasts. The photographer has nothing to do with this. This was all. Yeah. No, I, I did look into it. The art. Well, it's the, the art artist, director. Uh, the art director. Yeah. But. So people started pushing into Balenciaga. They said, we'll dig into it. Well, you know, if you follow your rabbit holes, the, the director, the artistic director yeah. of Balenciaga, in her fashion shows over the past few years, they've had bags, and I, this is going to sound graphic, but babies that are covered in blood, decapitated babies, decapitated children, in their bags that they're walking with on the runway of children like this. So, so people started saying... You guys don't have a problem with they're, children. They're pretend babies, though. Well, yeah, they're pretend babies. Okay, yeah. But child sacrifice, you want to talk about um, sexualization of children, blood drinkers, whatever. You go down the rabbit hole, you go into all these groups. Well, if you go into the Kirin group that owns Balenciaga, and you kind of, John, you and I yeah. were talking about this group yep. beforehand, but this parent company owns uh, um, another brand that sells um, explicit images of minor children yeah. with sexual paraphernalia paraphernalia yep. on their bodies yep. that you can buy as sex toys. So everyone's kind of saying, okay, Balenciaga, you did this. They came out and apologized right. and said, we're right. so sorry. But people are like, that's not enough. They want celebrities to come against it because in some pictures with celebrities, I don't know who it was exactly in the picture, but on the desk of this ad, there's an old um, Supreme Court case. I don't know what year it was. But it was when the Supreme Court came against um, child uh, porn, porn, like yeah. what's it called? Uh, yeah, child porn. Child porn. Like it, it was yeah. it, like they made it against the law to have it yeah. on your, um, your computer, computer, your phones, yep. whatever you'd go yep. to jail for it. Right. Yep. So they're saying you guys have specifically placed things in your ads on purpose that are going against and you're not protecting children. You don't care about children. You obviously are trying to infiltrate people's minds and make the sexualization of children normal. Yeah. And they're saying, no, we're not. But can I just say right. one thing? Side note. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but California between now and yep. next year is releasing 7,000 pedophile pedophiles. That means yeah. anybody who's done anything minor or major to children, they're releasing 7,000 of them. Right. And we have talked about before, they're trying to change the verbiage. We say minor attracted persons, right. blah, 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 blah about children but from if you, a pedophile from a pedophile they don't want you to use pedophile they think they, it's um wrong it's and psychologically damaging it to is. that person no their treatment of 
uh, actual minors is psychologically damaging. Yes, but you, that's, you that's can, the truth. Yes, you can go even, um, so like we were talking about bail, Molek, obviously, all this stuff. Yeah. But Balenciaga, mm, I think it was a year or two ago, in one of their other ads, you know, like the caution tape, yep. the yellow caution I've, tape I've got you it have picked on it? up. I've got it pulled up here. Okay, we'll throw it on and We'll our, put it on the... But in their caution tape, it says notes. bail, like it says Balenciaga, but the, it's so Balenciaga yep. is B-A-L. But yeah. in this, the beginning of it, they have B-A-A-L. Yeah. So it's like uh, Balenciaga. And there's actually Balenciaga. other images in that picture. Uh, there's one that looks like one of the images of Baal uh, yeah. or of uh, Moloch. One of the two uh, on the wall. It's yes. it's depicted in crayon. Uh, there's other other issues. Uh, well, the, that are- the director of um, Balenciaga, yeah. if you go into his, I don't know, uh, Instagram page. I followed a few people who were yeah. on it and they blurred out the graphic images, but his artwork in his home is all like child yeah, pornography. It's all terrible. Child yeah. porn. Yeah. The, the, this is the director of Sexualization Balenciaga. of children. And, and then you uh, look at. And it's, uh, you, you've got a lot of these connections to Epstein. Of course. And a lot of other people in prominent places of United States society as well as all over the world. Yeah. And everyone's like, so celebrities, you yeah. like, you, you, Kardashians. Normally, yes. Yeah. They're big Balenciaga people. They yeah. are, and they're and they haven't all said their a word. brands. No, because all their brands are right. owned by the Kirin Foundation, right. which is owned by Balenciaga. And you know, when when someone says like, "I'm going to take a minute and pause on this brand," that just means I'm just going to like I'm gonna wait not till cause any controversy, and I'm going to wait till down. it all goes away, and then you guys will forget about it because something else will happen. Right. And I'll still work with them because it's about the money. It's yeah. it is about the money. And Tucker Carlson did have Brittany Aldean on yeah. her show, and she talked about Balenciaga. And she threw away all of her Balenciaga stuff. She's like, I'm not going to own anything with that yeah. brand. What were you going to say? Uh, there's there's some other news that goes along with yeah. that. But I'll... I'll, well, I, go, I'll sh- well, we were talking before yeah. Jim got here about some of it, but just kind of like go down the little rabbit hole yeah. a little bit. I you You should be outraged from this, that this is prominent in any sort of acceptable society. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting that uh, the day before that came out, um, the Pentagon released that they have lost $2 trillion. Oh, yes. I forgot it, about that. So it, there's an outcry about Balenciaga, but uh, there's other things going on. And, you know, uh, media but, likes to uh, put, put guys, distractions out they there. They lost $2 trillion, but they want to... Audit you for six hundred dollars right. on Venmo. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, anytime. PayPal. That, Apple. Anytime you spend six hundred dollars or more, they 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 um they're tracking it. Yeah. That's but, that is a fact. But if you, unless you don't have Venmo and you have a no. flip phone, mm, if you have a flip okay. phone. But if you want to hear more about the Balenciaga, because we can't get into it, Candace Owens did a really good piece on yep. it. Yep. Landon and um Robbie Starbuck. Robbie Starbuck used to be a. Uh, um, video direct music video director in Hollywood. Yeah. And he's like, it is so prevalent, you guys. Yep. So he stepped away. He moved to Nashville. He tried to run and it was proved that the Biden administration kept him off of, um, what is it called? Certain when ballots. Right? Yeah. The ballots. Yeah, right. But they, they are, um, big child advocates. Yep. They, they do a lot of with that. So if you want more on that information, you can right. follow their Instagram accounts. Yep. And as we close, just resources. summing it up, this Balenciaga who is really connected to a lot of celebrities. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they try to put out this ad, but right? it's not and, just Balenciaga. If you look at other right. fashion, yeah. Companies. Of course. It, this is just the first one. But my point is, is that, so they, they, they really screw up because they put out a cute little four year old with a teddy bear in sexual bondage gear right. and, and all these empty alcohol containers and things like that. And they try to do it. They boom, they drop it. There's this huge outcry, Mm -hmm. but then it puts eyes on Balenciaga. Yes. You start looking into the people that run Balenciaga, i.e. child porn freaks. Yes. Yes. Right. Look at the, you know, you've got so many, so many celebrities just staying mum about this company. And this is just something that is common. You've got their fashion shows. People started looking into their fashion shows, which is kind of a closed world in a sense. And their models are walking runways with, with, uh, you know, bloody babies, ba- bloody and babies and headless babies 
in the purses, right? Yeah. Uh, pretend babies. They're trying to make a statement. They're trying to desensitize the public, right? right? This is Malek making it a common thing, a very common thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a sobering thing. And again, check it out. Je yeah. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's new book, The Return of the Gods. And we'll, we thank you so much for tuning yeah. in. Be vigilant. To the final yes. hour podcast, we're going to have a guest host, um, uh, our guest, oh, a yeah. guest on from Israel here uh, that we're going to be airing around Christmas, uh, straight out of Israel mm -hmm. with a lot of Are great stuff on that. that. Please yes. do subscribe. Thank you so much for viewing or listening to us on Rumble, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, all of it. We appreciate you. I pray for you every day, every viewer, every uh, listener, every subscriber. Uh, the Bible is very clear in Ephesians um, Ephesians 1 and 3. You can cover a group of people. Yeah. And, and so I cover you. I cover you in my prayers. Everything I say for myself is said for you. Thank you so much for tuning into the Final Hour Podcast. We'll see you next week. And don't forget about our new drop time, 12.01 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. Check, Check out, out the some merchandise. merch. <laughs> Check out the merchandise. 